the Epic Games versus Apple uh, Epic, pun intended, court battle kicks off this week. Um, Epic is suing Apple for removing Fortnite from the App Store last year, but this is bigger than just a video game. Take us inside the context of what's happening here. Sure. So Apple built up the modern concept of an app store when they launched it along with the iPhone 3G back in 2008. And the idea is a central location on every phone that people can go to and easily download apps because their credit card is stored there. They trust the company with the security. And in exchange for this, while free apps are free, Apple charges a percentage for paid apps. Right now, it's 30% for a lot of apps, goes down to 15 for some categories or over time. And now that other companies have built up huge businesses based on the App Store, they're sort of really salty about sharing that income with Apple. Um, so last summer, um Epic changed how they build customers within the App Store, and then Apple kicked them off. What happened? So Epic decided that they no longer wanted to pay both Apple and Google a percentage because Google charges the same sort of rates that Apple does for games. And they put a stealth update in. They included some code in the application that they could turn on later after they'd passed through the various review processes. And so they did that. And a big banner came up saying, you don't have to give Apple any of your money. You can come and pay us directly and you'll get way more bang from your buck. And so Apple and Google said that was a clear violation of the App Store and the Google Play store policies removed them from the store and epic sued um so epic uh, along with this uh, coalition for app fairness which epic helped create that uh, has almost 50 third-party developers they contend that uh the iphone and the app store is a monopoly because apple has exclusive access to the iphone hardware the ios software and the app store which rides on top of iOS. Apple says we're not a monopoly because you can buy Fortnite in Nintendo, you can buy it um, on the PlayStation and a number of other app stores. And they say that our 30% surcharge is fairly competitive. It's what everyone charges. So who's right? So both of them can be right. It depends like a lot of these situations on how you define things. So the way that Epic wants them defined is that the App Store, that the iPhone is its own market and that Apple completely dominates that market. And therefore it's unfair that they charge these fees. Apple wants people to look at the larger market, all the platforms that you can download or play Fortnite on, including all the game consoles. And all these markets are roughly the same. They charge the same sorts of rates. They have the same sort of control over their own har hardware. They have the same sort of power over their own ecosystem. So it's, in some ways it's a battle over whose definition gets accepted. What are the stakes here? Uh, if Epic wins, what happens to the iPhone and iOS? So it's this is the part that's really unclear to me because Epic is also battling Google over this and Google has traditionally been much more open than Apple. They do demand their share of video game profits, but you can sideload, for example, you don't have to use the, the Google Play Store on your Android device. And that's one of the remedies that people are suggesting might apply to Apple that you'd be able to do outside transactions. But Epic still isn't happy with that on Android. And it seems like when you read deeper into their court papers, what they really want is to become the App Store. They're a billion dollar company looking at these trillion dollar companies and saying, we could be that, we could be the gatekeeper instead of having to put up with them. And when you look at the kind of profits that are made off of emotes and skins in Epic or, you know, Poca coins or whatever, you, you know, all, all these virtual V-Bucks that everyone is buying, those far exceed profits being made on the App Store. So I think they're, they're sort of feeling their power and seeing their opportunity here. Now, what about smaller developers? Uh, I've spoken with everyone uh, ranging from Spotify to Basecamp, uh, Tile, ProtonMail, and a ton of other developers who say that Apple unfairly leverages their strength um, in the App Store uh, to keep these developers locked into a relationship where Apple keeps the, cust uh, the credit cards for the customers and can kind of tell them how they charge customers in the app. Uh, is there some merit to that argument? 
Yeah, I think again, it's, it's, it's going to depend on whose point of view you take because Apple looks at it as it's as if it's Apple's customers and they're going to, in some ways, protect us against the worst abuses of developer behavior, uh, even though there are still scam apps and all sorts of other things on the App Store. And developers want to have that one on one relationship. But Apple offers a really compelling value proposition because the App Store not only gives them access to Apple's vast pool of customers, but even simple things like uh, a lot of developers get churn when credit cards expire, because if you have your credit card with 18 different developers, you may not update all of those, but almost everyone is going to make sure their App Store credit card is up to date all the time. So in addition to the other benefits you get with Apple handling transactions and all these things, you get almost guaranteed customer retention. So I think the savvier developers that I that I speak to sort of know that it's not a perfect deal, but it's a deal that is valuable to them for very specific sorts of business needs. Well, the trial is supposed to play out uh, over the next three weeks to a month, and we'll see high-profile CEOs testify, uh, Epic's t uh, Tim Sweeney, Apple's Tim Cook, and others. What are you watching for as the trial progresses? The thing that's going to be super curious to me is just how um, how much of an understanding the judge brings to this, because in previous hearings, she has been absolutely spot on to the point where I think she almost reduced Epic's lawyer to tears at the midpoint break in the early pretrials. Uh, so how she chooses to apply these various definitions in context, I think is going to be key. If I had to guess, I think Epic loses this on the merits, but the Department of Justice and the EU are going to weigh in and it may not go so well for Apple there.